Good morning. My name is Martin Estrada. I'm the United States Attorney based in Los Angeles. We're here today with our law enforcement partners to announce federal criminal charges related to the death of the actor, Matthew Perry. Following Mr. Perry's death in October of last year, law enforcement, my office, and our partners represented on this stage began an in-depth, wide-ranging investigation. That investigation has revealed a broad, underground criminal network responsible for distributing large quantities of ketamine to Mr. Perry and others. This network included a live-in assistant, various go-betweens, two medical doctors, and a major source of drug supply known as, quote, the ketamine queen. We charged five defendants in this matter. These defendants took advantage of Mr. Perry's addiction issues to enrich themselves. They knew what they were doing was wrong. They knew what they were doing was risking great danger to Mr. Perry, but they did it anyways. In the end, these defendants were more interested in profiting off Mr. Perry than caring for his well-being. As many of you know, Mr. Perry struggled with addiction in the past. And on many occasions, he sought help for his addiction issues. The investigation revealed that in the fall of 2023, Mr. Perry fell back into addiction, and these defendants took advantage to profit for themselves. The two lead defendants in this case are defendants Salvador Placencia and defendant Jasveen Sanya. First, I'll talk about defendant Placencia. Defendant Placencia was a medical doctor. He worked with another medical doctor, defendant Mark Chavez, to obtain ketamine. He then worked with Mr. Perry's live-in assistant, defendant Kenneth Iwamasa, to distribute that ketamine to Mr. Perry. Over two months, from September to October 2023, they distributed approximately 20 vials of ketamine to Mr. Perry in exchange for $55,000 in cash. Defendant Placentia saw this as an opportunity to profit off of Mr. Perry. He wrote in a text message in September 2023, quote, I wonder how much this moron will pay. He also stated in text messages that he wanted to be Mr. Perry's sole source of supply. He wrote in a text message that he wanted to be Mr. Perry's, quote, go-to for drugs. As a doctor, defendant Placentia knew full well the danger of what he was doing. In fact, on one occasion, he injected Mr. Perry with ketamine, and he saw Mr. Perry freeze up and his blood pressure spike. Despite that, he left additional vials of ketamine for defendant Iwamasa to administer to Mr. Perry. Of course, defendant Iwamasa had no medical training to speak of. Defendant Placentia knew what he was doing was harming Mr. Perry. He had spoken to another patient in mid-October 2023, and he told that patient that Mr. Perry was spiraling out of control with his addiction. Nonetheless, Defendant Placentia continued to offer ketamine to Mr. Perry. Likewise, Defendant Sonia knew what she was doing was harming defendant, uh, defendants and also Mr. Perry. She took advantage of Mr. Perry by selling large amounts of ketamine to Mr. Perry over a two-week period in October of 2023. She sold approximately 50 vials of ketamine for approximately $11,000 in cash. She worked with a broker, defendant Eric Fleming, and also the live-in assistant, defendant Iwamasa, to distribute this ketamine. Sonia and the broker, defendant Fleming, saw this as an opportunity to profit off of Mr. Perry. In a text message, the broker wrote, quote, I wouldn't do it if there wasn't a chance of me making some money for doing this. Defendant Sonia sold the batch of ketamine that resulted in Mr. Perry's death on October 28th. Officers later searched Defendant Sonia's home. During that search, they found what amounted to a drug-selling emporium. 
they found 80 vials of ketamine, thousands of pills containing methamphetamine, cocaine, bottles of Xanax and other illegally obtained prescription drugs, and drug selling paraphernalia including scales and ledgers. As I mentioned, the defendants in this case knew what they were doing was wrong. When they'd refer to the ketamine, they used coded language. They'd refer to it using terms such as, quote, Dr. Pepper, or quote, bots, or quote, cans. Also, defendants Placentia and Chavez, as medical doctors, knew full well this was not the proper way to administer ketamine, and they even talked about that in their exchanges. And defendant Sonia also knew that she was doing something that caused great risk to Mr. Perry. In fact, during this investigation, we learned that several years before, in 2019, defendant Sonia had sold ketamine to another customer. That person died the same day. And a family member of that person sent a message to defendant Sonia telling her the cause of death was ketamine. Nonetheless, defendant Sonia continued selling drugs, including ketamine, including the ketamine that ultimately killed Mr. Perry. That other victim was a person named Cody McClory. He died in 2019. As a result of this investigation, we have filed a drug distribution charge related to the death of Mr. McClory. After Mr. Perry died, these defendants tried to cover up what they had done. On October 28th, after reading news reports of Mr. Perry's death, defendant Sonia wrote a text message to defendant Fleming saying, quote, delete all our messages. Likewise, after Mr. Perry's death, defendant Placentia falsified medical records and notes to try to make it look like what he was doing was legitimate. It was not. We have filed numerous federal charges against the five defendants. These charges include conspiracy to distribute ketamine, distribution of ketamine resulting in death, maintaining drug-involved premises for that drug-selling emporium the defendant Sonia had, altering and falsifying records related to a federal investigation for those false medical notes and records that defendant Placentia made, and multiple other drug trafficking counts. Of course, the defendants are presumed innocent until proven guilty. The penalties these defendants face are very significant. With regard to defendant Placentia, the statutory maximum sentence he faces is 120 years in federal prison. And with regard to defendant Sonia, the statutory maximum she faces is life imprisonment. By filing these extensive and serious charges, we are sending a clear message. If you are in the business of selling dangerous drugs, we will hold you accountable for the deaths that you cause. This is nothing new for us. Since 2022, my office has filed over 60 cases against drug dealers who've caused the death of another person. These cases are known as death resulting cases. They're labor intensive cases and we work with our law enforcement partners, including ones represented here today, to bring those cases. Our office is a national leader in bringing those cases. They're very important because every victim's life counts. If you are in the drug selling business and you're selling dangerous drugs, you are playing roulette with other people's lives, just like the five defendants here did to Mr. Perry. Defendants nowadays are on full notice that the products they sell could result in the death of another person. <coughs> Therefore, if you're in the drug business, and despite these risks, you continue in the drug business, you are pushed by greed to gamble with other people's lives, be advised, we will hold you accountable. I wanna thank our partners in this case, the Los Angeles Police Department, the Drug Enforcement Administration, and the US Postal Inspection Service. These investigators did a phenomenal job digging into the case, looking at every angle to develop a case, a strong case against not only those who killed Mr. Perry, but also Mr. McClory. I wanna note 
that these cases are important and we'll continue to collaborate with our law enforcement partners to bring them to ensure that justice is brought to every victim. And finally, let me thank the prosecutors responsible for the investigation and the prosecution of this case. Those are Assistant United States Attorneys Ian Yanello and Xiaohan Tsai.